combat, the, the most common cause of death is due to massive hemorrhage. So that's the that's our first our first uh, point with our primary survey is making sure that we um, evaluate for any kind of massive hemorrhage and then stop the bleeding. It's the first first step. I mean, we had everything from behavioral health techs to you know, brand new LPNs who've never done anything kind of trauma based as far as training goes to all the way up to, you know, orthopedic surgeons, OBGYN surgeons, internal medicine docs. So it's a very wide spectrum. Um, we kind of tried to, f you know, make it fit so that everybody, regardless of experience, would really get something out of the training. Because if you go kind of too hard and too fast, then those individuals who kind of have never seen this before, they kind of get left in the dust, right? Because they don't really, they've never had this kind of training before, they've never really experienced it. So we really kind of did a, a crawl walk phase with the scenarios. The soldiers were supposed to overtake a machine gun bunker and then provide aid to two casualties that were taken down by that machine gun. Um, once they provided aid, they were to report up a nine line medevac and then evacuate those casualties to uh, further care. We simulated a lower leg amputation, uh, a gunshot wound to the chest, and depending on which patient they were treating would be dependent upon which care they were providing. Our goal was to have the medic perform all the tasks, and the team leader's goal was to be going back and forth between the two patients and then gathering that information that would be needed to relay that to the medical personnel as well as leadership, you know, further away, who aren't literally right there with these soldiers so that they are able to get the medevac going and get these patients taken care of. That this is something that we, you know, we've got to continue to practice and and reinforce it is a great training opportunity to kind of step outside of our comfort zone and do some things that we're not typically um, that we typically do on a daily basis but you know what these the the training that we did was really based off of you know TC3 or tactical combat casualty care guidelines which is kind of the standard um, for um, kind of trauma management in, in a far forward austere environment um, so this just kind of this training was just it was a great opportunity for to get people of different experiences um, together to train together um, and I, th I think you know we can obviously continue to um, improve upon it to broaden the scope of the scenarios um, over the time you know um, increase the complexity of them as well um, and it, it helps build teams, right? Because you get to work with people that you don't otherwise work with or see in the hospital. Because really, when it comes down to it, we all have to be at least have some kind of basic knowledge and training on this because, I mean, anybody can be a, a combat casualty, um, especially kind of as we're getting away from the counterinsurgency and now looking more towards like a peer-to-peer -to -peer conflict. Um, it's a much different kind of scale of warfare than we're used to over the last 20 years. So really, it is anybody can could be... At, at, anybody could find themselves at point of injury.